Welcome. Let's take a look at an example of determining whether or not the mean value theorem can be applied to a function on a specified interval. The function we're interested in is x over x plus 1, and the interval we're interested in is from negative 1 half to 2. So first we need to determine whether the mean value theorem can be applied. Then if so, find all values c that are guaranteed by the theorem. Recall that by the mean value theorem, f of x must be continuous over the closed interval from a to b. Our interval in this case is negative 1 half to one, uh, 2. And in this case, our function is a rational function. Rational functions are continuous on their domain. Recall that the domain of this function would be all real numbers with the exception of negative 1, as that would cause the denominator to equal 0. So let's note that f of x is continuous on the interval from negative 1 half to 2. The second criteria for the mean value theorem is that the function must be differentiable over the open interval. That is differentiable over all um, values of x between negative 1 half and 2. And it's important to note that rational functions are differentiable on their domain. And for this particular rational function, the domain is all real numbers with the exception of x equals negative 1. Since negative 1 is not an element of the interval from negative 1 half to 2, we can say that f of x is in fact differentiable on the open interval from negative 1 half to 2. Having determined that our function is continuous on the closed interval from negative 1 half to 2, and that it is differentiable on the open interval from negative 1 half to 2, then the mean value theorem will apply. And so we are guaranteed there is at least one c in the open interval, in this case negative 1 half to 2, such that the slope of the tangent line, or f prime at c, is equal to the slope of the secant line, or, or the slope of the secant line that connects a comma f at a and b comma f at b. Also could be thought of as the average rate of change of the function over that interval. So we know that this value c exists. So let's go ahead and find the derivative of our function so that we can find this value c. So uh, starting with f prime of x, the derivative of the numerator is 1 times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, which is also 1, times the numerator, all divided by the denominator squared, or x plus 1 squared. This gives us x plus 1 minus x over x plus 1 quantity squared. And when we simplify that, we end up with 1 over x plus 1 squared. So we have the derivative, so we could start to work with the left side of this equation, but we also need to know what this ratio is on the right side of the equation. So let's go ahead and find f of b and f of a so that we can find that ratio. So f of b, that's f of the right-hand endpoint, is 2 over 2 plus 1. 
So get, that gives us two thirds. And then f of the right hand in or left hand endpoint, so f of negative one half will give us negative one half over negative one half plus one. That gives us negative one half over one half. So the one halves will divide out and leave us with a negative one. So f at negative one half is equal to negative one. So um, setting up this equation that's guaranteed by the mean value theorem, f prime at c is equal to f of b, the right endpoint, so 2 thirds, minus f at a, the left endpoint, that's negative 1, all divided by b, which is 2, minus a, which is negative 1 half. Uh, doing some simplifying in the numerator, 2 thirds minus negative 1 is 2 thirds plus 1, which will give us 5 thirds in the numerator. In the denominator, we have 2 minus a negative 1 half. That's the same as 2 plus 1 half, which gives us a total of 5 halves in our denominator. Um, dividing those, we have 5 thirds times 2 fifths and the fives will divide out, leaving us with two thirds. So F prime at C should equal two thirds. So let's go ahead and replace C in our derivative function. So one over C plus one squared, that's our F prime at C, should equal two-thirds. Now this is a proportion, so we could cross-multiply and solve for c plus one squared. Notice that we have a fraction on the left side and the right-hand side of this equation. So if the two fractions are equivalent, then their uh, inverses or the reciprocals should be equivalent. So I can say c plus 1 squared over 1 should be the same as 3 over 2, simply taking the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. Now uh, we're solving for c, so we would want to take the square root of both sides of this equation. So we get c plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 halves. Now we want to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, and we end up with c is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 halves. So we really have two solutions here. One solution is c equals negative 1 minus the square root of 3 halves. Now that is approximately equal to negative 2.25. I'm sorry, there's another 2 in there. 225. Well, that's clearly not in the interval we were instructed to investigate. So we are going to exclude that value of c. We have a second value of c. c is equal to 1, negative 1, plus the square root of 3 halves. And that is approximately equal to 0 0.225. And that number is within the interval we're interested in. So we will retain that value for C. So thus the value of C guaranteed by uh, the mean value theorem is negative one plus the square root of three halves.
which is approximately 0 0.225. But we'll go ahead and refer to the C though in its exact form. I hope you find this helpful.